always having been intrigued by historical geology, with its eras of hundreds of millions of years, I was interested to know to what extent it could be and has been tested by experiment. It was for this reason that some years ago I renewed my studies on the subject and in particular on the application of the principles of stratigraphy to obtain a relative chronology from superposition of strata. I started in the 1970s by reading reports from the Geological Society of America on the underwater drilling campaigns of the American ship Gloma Challenger. It was from these reports that I learned about the works of the German geologist Johannes Walter, one of the principal founders of sedimentology. Before going further, let's explain some of the terms involved. Stratification is the general term for layering in rocks. A stratum is a single layer of homogeneous or gradational lithology deposited parallel to the original dip of the formation. It is separated from adjacent strata or cross strata by surfaces of erosion, non-deposition or abrupt change in character. The term stratum includes bed and lamination which carry definite thickness connotations. Strata vary in thickness from less than a millimetre for microstrata or laminae to more than a metre. Stratum often shows evidence of sorting of the particles of which it is composed, with the size decreasing from bottom to top of the stratum. The large particles at the bottom grade up to the small ones at the top. The limit surfaces are separations between the fine particles at the top of one strata and the large ones at the bottom of the strata which covers it. Bedding planes which can separate two strata and those caused by erosion of sediments. A facies is a series of superposed strata having the same lithological content. For instance, a series of strata all composed of sandstone or all of clay or all of limestone are called a facies. This cliff face has been divided into facies. The sandstone deposit is colored yellow, the clay deposit blue and the limestone orange. Each deposit is subdivided into strata. For two centuries since stratigraphy was founded and without formal proof, strata superposed or sitting one on top of the other and on a larger scale superposed facies have been considered as successive layers or isochronously deposited sediment. That is to say that the lower one formed first and then the one above it formed second and so on. The principles of stratigraphy arose from this belief of strata and facies being successive layers. The term principle, as referred to in stratigraphy, is defined by the Oxford Dictionary as a general or inclusive law exemplified in numerous cases. It was in 1669 that Nicholas Steno, a naturalist from Tuscany, defined the principles of stratigraphy in his book entitled Prodromus. These include the principle of superposition, where in a sequence of strata any stratum is younger than the sequence of strata on which it rests and is older than the strata that rest upon it. At the time when any given stratum was being formed, all the matter resting upon it was fluid and therefore, at the time when the lower stratum was being formed, none of the upper strata existed. Steno, 1669. The principle of initial horizontality says that strata are deposited horizontally and then deformed to various attitudes later. Strata either perpendicular to the horizon or inclined to the horizon were at one time parallel to the horizon. Steno, 1669. 
the principle of strata continuity says that strata can be assumed to have continued laterally far from where they presently end. Material forming any stratum were continuous over the surface of the earth unless some other solid bodies stood in the way. Steno, 1669. These three principles of stratigraphy provided the basis upon which geologists at the end of the 18th century and the beginning of the 19th established the geological column. They assumed that sediments had deposited horizontally around the world and that the rate of deposition was the same everywhere for each layer. Furthermore, since the days of geologists James Hutton and Charles Lyell, it was assumed that the rate of erosion and sedimentation in the past was the same as today. In consequence, the age of a stratum was estimated from present-day rates of sediment deposition and from the depth of the stratum in the hypothetical column of sedimentary rock. Hypothetical because all the assumed stages of the column are never found together in any one geological formation. The method used to date the sedimentary rocks from the Cambrian period to the present was, therefore, based upon the principle of superposition. By applying the principle of continuity, the same age could be given to outcrops of what were assumed to be the same facies, whether in South America, South Africa or Australia. Later, the fossil content of sedimentary formations in different sites was used to show a correspondence of age between the fossils of one site and those of another. This gave rise to a fourth principle of stratigraphy, the principle of paleontological identity. This principle states that two strata with the same paleontological content are the same age. This means that if the fossils in a layer in, say, the Himalayas are the same as those in a layer in the Appalachians, they could be considered as having the same age. As a preliminary to my experiments, I examined the existing data. At the end of the last century, Johannes Walter studied the formation of contemporaneous sedimentary deposits which prograded or developed from the coast towards the open sea. By drilling into the sediments, he observed the same succession of facies from the surface downwards as from the coast towards the sea. A law was formulated of Walter's observations that facies superposed in a deposit area would also be seen to lay side by side. He examined the sediments in the Bay of Naples. By boring vertically downwards through the sediments in the bay, he saw that the facies that lay on top of each other were in the same sequence as those that were lying next to each other horizontally. The sequence of facies that could be seen lying side by side as he went from the coast out to the sea was the same as the sequence of facies that lay on top of each other in a downward direction. He realized that the belief that the facies at the bottom was older than the one on top was wrong. Quite obviously, all the facies he was examining, the one at the top, the one underneath, and the one at the bottom, were still forming. They were forming sideways, so that part of the top facies was the same age as part of the bottom facies. This phenomenon can also be observed during coastal marine floods.